Hey and welcome back to Simple Happy Zen, it's Vera here and for this video today I'm going to be showing you my minimalist bullet journal setup for 2020 and I actually made a video with my 2019 setup last year and it is one of my most watched videos and it was really nice to see all these people getting inspired by it and learning that bullet journaling doesn't have to be difficult. And so for this year, I made some improvements. It is still a minimalist setup, so that means no difficult artsy stuff. Anyone can do this, and I'm gonna show you a flip through as well, so you can follow along with your own bullet journal if you like. If you're not familiar with the concept of a bullet journal, it's just a great way to organize your life, basically. I use it to give structure to my days and my weeks. I plan my tasks, I keep lists of things in there, and it's just really nice to have everything in one place. And it is quite customary uh, at the start of a new year to get a new bullet journal, but mine was still half empty, and being the minimalist that I am, I thought it would be just a waste to throw this one out and buy a new one. So what I did is I used some washi tape I don't know if you can see in the middle to mark the end of 2019 and the start of 2020. I keep my supplies very minimal but I'm gonna link everything that I use in the description box down below and you can use any journal that you like so you can get the one I use or just use a different one. My recommendation would be to get one where the pages are dotted instead of lined and preferably also one where the pages are already numbered so you don't have to do that yourself. All right let's begin. All right let's open it up. I used the Leuchtturm 1917 notebook. Uh, it comes with a few bullet journal things. It has a key already in here, some instructions, etc. Um, that's not really why I like this one. I mainly like it because of the quality of the paper and just the feel of the notebook itself. That's why I like it. But again, you can use any notebook that you like. And let's start with opening it up to where 2020 is starting. So you can see I used washi tape along the edges so that I can always find it in a heartbeat. But this journal also comes with these little thingies, <laughs> which are really nice. And I usually start the year off with a quote that I find inspiring. And last year for 2019, I chose start where you are, use what you have and do what you can, which is still one of my favorite quotes ever. Um, so it was really inspiring. It's just a nice way to start off the year in your notebook. Of course, this is totally optional. And then on the next page we have a bullet journal classic and that is the index part and the main thing about this index is just so that you can find whatever it is that you're looking for quickly so it doesn't come with an index you have to make one yourself so let's say that i want to quickly review my wish list instead of having to leaf through this entire notebook i can just quickly look in the index and find my wish list and sometimes, as you will already see here, you might make a mistake in your notebook, like I did right there. And this is a great exercise to just not bother with it so much. The main thing about a bullet journal for me is that it helps me to make my life easier and not more difficult or more time consuming by making everything look perfectly. So that is not the function and that's why I do not get upset if I make a mistake here and there. Next up is another bullet journal classic and that is the future log or yearly planner or kind of the year at a glance. Now this is very different from the one that I made last year. This is much much simpler and shorter, it only takes two pages. And as you can see, I just quickly made a box for every month of the year. And this is where you can write down the big things that are happening in a certain month. And it kind of gives you a nice overview of your entire year. I still have to fill this out more, but I already entered a few things just to show you what it could look like. And this is actually very different from the one that I used last year. So this is what it looked like in 2019. And this is a more classic kind of setup. What you see a lot in future logs is that people use these calendars. But the downside of this is that it, it takes up more pages than the other one, but mostly the fact that drawing on these calendars was pretty time consuming. And I found that during the year of 2019, I actually haven't used these calendars at all. I haven't looked at them even once. So this year I decided not to use them again, even though I do think this looks kind of pretty, it's just not really useful. And I prefer the cleaner, more useful one that I chose for this year, it was a lot quicker to set up to. Also, 
I don't use a ruler when I draw in my boxes and lines and stuff. I just use it by hand and I use the dotted pages as a guide because it is just a lot easier, quicker. I don't mind it if the lines are not completely straight. All right, so let's move from the yearly calendar to my monthly calendar. And I chose to use kind of the same setup as last year, but I made some changes. So a monthly calendar is just your month at a glance, just as you can use the yearly calendar for your year at a glance. And you can use this for whatever you like. For me, I customized it into a monthly content calendar. So I used a pretty basic standard bullet journal setup here as well. A lot of people use this where you just uh, put down all the days of the month and then also put a little letter to signify what kind of day it is of the week. So let's see what this looks like filled in because I did this last year as well with a few changes. So I can just note my video topics and then these little X's have to do with this schedule at the top. And that was super, super convenient for me because it helps to break down bigger tasks such as uploading a video into smaller tasks that you can then cross off your list. Now, what I changed is that I also added an important tasks part at the second page. And that was something that I really missed last year. For example, four times a year, I have to do my taxes, just things like that. And I can always just write them down in my important tasks box. And right here, I have a list of everything that I need to do for each video every week so that I can check off all the different stages. So the first is scripted, then filmed, then edited. Then I have information. That means things like description, thumbnails, um, info cards, end cards, etc. Then I have the video scheduled. Then I have scheduling all the tweets for that video to go on Twitter. I added it to my website. I added closed captions to my videos. And then if I have added it to my newsletter, I can check that one off as well. And then we get to a very simple list, which is basically just a video ideas list. And this year I made a little bit more room for it because I didn't have that many pages in my uh, 2019 setup. So if I have an idea for a new video, I can always write it in my bullet journal. Of course, in your case, it will probably be something else. So whichever projects or uh, work or school thing you have going on, uh, it's a nice way to gather all your thoughts and ideas as they come. As for how I set up this page, I don't think it gets any simpler than this. I did use a colored marker, but other than that, this takes like maybe 20 seconds to set up. And then after my video ideas list, I added a new section that I didn't have last year and that I came to really miss. And it is just actually not special at all. It is a note section and that is just something that I kind of forgot last year. Um, if I, for example, am on a Skype meeting with a fellow YouTuber, sometimes we have meetings <laughs> and we kind of help each other out, swap ideas, uh, which is something that I really, really like. And I didn't really have a place to put just my notes for meetings like that. And now I do. So whenever I come across something that I want to save or something that I want to take into consideration, kind of like improve my channel or improve my videos, I will have a section where I can add all my notes. Next page, we have my ta -ta 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 wish list, something I talk about all the time on my channel. Keep a wish list as a minimalist, it really helps. And this is mine. It was really simple to set up, actually the same setup that I used last year. And I have one category for my wardrobe. Then I have one category for my home. I have one category for my channel and one category for other, basically everything that doesn't fit into those other three. As for how I set this up, I used a very simple box structure uh, with rounded corners. Uh, I just think the rounded corners add a little friendliness to it. Of course, it's totally optional. You can just draw four boxes. It doesn't really matter. Next up is another new setup that I am really excited by. It is so simple, but I do really think it's going to make my life a lot easier. And that is I added a someday projects list. 
I don't know if you're like me, but I get new ideas for projects a couple times a day. <laughs> and it's kind of hard to keep track of them. Some are good ideas, some are not so good ideas. Some have a really high priority or urgency and some not so much. And then I either forget about them or I stress myself out trying not to forget about them and keeping it in my head. So instead I made a someday projects list and whenever I have an idea of something that I would like to do someday, I can add it to this list. And it's a very simple setup that what you just write down the name of the project and then for the priority, you either give it a one, a two or a three, depending on how high the priority is. In my case, I decided that three would be the highest, one would be the lowest and the priority is just simply based on the expected outcome or results that the project will have. Something that's also new that I'm really excited about uh, also has to do with projects. So I added a project planning section and I have six room for six projects in here. Now, I already filled in three and I kept three of them still blank. And what I did was for these pages, you can see that I decided to decorate them a little bit. That is just because I know that I'm going to be staring at these pages <laughs> for a lot of hours this year and I decided to invest a little time into decorating them. Of course, these decorations are totally optional. So if you want, you can just use straight lines. It is all about the function and how I set it up is just a very simple two page spread for each project. So I've shown you the first three and then I have just room for three more this year. And the projects that I'm going to be adding into this notebook are things that are going to take me at least a month. So for example, last month I launched uh, my first online course and this was a project that took me five months in total. So I really found that I missed having a good project planning tool and I tried several things, uh, also digital planners, but I just found that something very simple like this, for me, it works best. So how I set it up is over here goes the title of the project and it is a little bit different for each spread. And then I have two boxes. First is goal. Something that I want to keep in mind is just what is my goal for this project? And over here I made a box with finished by and of course there goes the date where you want a project to be finished. And the reason why I did this is because of Parkinson's law. I don't know if you uh, have heard about that before, but it basically says that a project will take as long as the allowed time for it to take. So let's say that you think you're going to have three months to complete this project. You will complete it in three months, but if you take six months, then you will probably take six months to complete it. And it works like that for me as well. And also again, uh, if if I have a finished by date, then I can just use that as a tool to keep my perfectionist tendencies under control because if I don't have a ending date, I will just keep tweaking and improving and changing things around and it will never get finished. So that's why I added the finished by box. Then also I have a section where I can just write down general ideas and then this is the most important part. I like to keep my project planning very simple. So just a simple what list and a when list. Now let's continue to the last part of this bullet journal flip through and that is the most important if you ask me and that is the weekly setup or weekly spread. Now here is where I actually changed the most I think. Um, I'm gonna show you what I had in 2019 and the things that were and were not working uh, because I do think that that is also a really great setup uh, depending on your needs. So I'm gonna quickly show you that first and then I'm gonna show you my new setup for 2020 and I actually narrowed it down to two different setups that I'm both going to use for a couple of weeks and then decide which one is my favorite because right now I'm kind of torn <laughs> between the two. All right, so last year I had this setup and it's basically just a big to-do list for the entire week. So it is not really scheduled for the separate dates. And there's a note section at the bottom, for example, there was a birthday going on this week. And then I can just simply tick off everything that I finished. Something that I actually did not use as much were these weekly numbers. So that's something that I decided to change and not use anymore for 2020. 
Something else that I did not really like was the fact that this is a weekly to-do list and sometimes if I'm really busy, if I have a hectic week coming up, I actually prefer to have it separate for every day, to have all my to-dos for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc. And also I could not pencil in any personal appointments in here. I had to use my calendar on my phone for that. So I'm gonna show you the first of my two new weekly spreads that I'm going to be trying out. This is the first and it is super simple, but I really like it. I do think it's also quite pretty and just very minimal. So this is a two page spread for an entire week. So that is something that's different. Also, there are separate boxes for every day. So that gives me a little bit more structure to plan up my tasks for the certain days of the week. Also, what this does is I have a notes section right here because that is something that I really liked about my old one, that there was a notes section. And then right here, I have a space where I can write down all my personal appointments for that week. And then the second weekly spread idea is this one. Again, this is also a two page spread for one week. And I really like this one uh, because it is very separate for your personal stuff and your work stuff. And it still allows for a lot of flexibility, which I really like. Over here, you have these little boxes that are basically just kind of brackets that are very easy to set up for every day of the week. And I'm gonna use that section to write down all my personal meetings and stuff. I also just really like the setup because it looks super clean like this. I actually like the brackets more than the boxes. And then right here, we have a list for my tasks. So in this setup, it will still be a simply to-do list for the entire week, which is something that I prefer most weeks, as I said before. But if I wanted to have more structure with uh, the tasks of the week, I think I'm just gonna draw in some boxes uh, similar to the left and then actually write down my tasks for each day of the week. So I'm going to use both setups for a couple of weeks and see which one I like best. And I'm really curious, of course, which one you guys like best. So let me know in the comments uh, which of these two you prefer. And I'm also just curious if you have used a bullet journal before or if you're a newbie at this, please let me know how you got here and what your plans for the next year are. Are you going to use a bullet journal or not? Please share it in the comments. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. That would really help me out big time. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you're not here already. Today was a little bit different of a video, but I hope you guys liked it. And I wish you all a very pleasant day and I'll see you next week with a new video. Bye bye.